Welcome to Nico Props. It's me, Chris. Um, so uh, yeah, we've been working on the uh, the charge controller and uh, and the batteries and stuff, which um, I've actually had to move. I've moved them to here. I've built a rack behind me so that they're much closer. Um, all part of the learning experience. While I was googling and working out materials and stuff like that, and working out what cables to attach this lot to the battery pack that when I had it down there, I realized that I have to account for the amperage, uh, sorry, the resistance of the cable itself over the distance from this panel down to where the batteries were and back again. Uh, plus also you've got to account for the wattage you're planning to use and stuff like that. There's, there's a whole complicated um, uh, formula. My choice was go for a thick cable, potentially produce heat when it's running down on the floor, potentially dangerous. So I figured I'd move the the, uh, the batteries up. Now, with this in mind, the length of the cable, I need to keep it as short as I possibly can. Um, so I'm gonna have, I'm gonna rearrange all of this panel as well before I connect it up to the batteries, so that I use. The space more efficiently and my cable runs are as short as possible. So uh, let me crack on with that. Okay, all the trips are down so that means they're all off. I've got a 63 on the battery bank at the moment. I'm going to change that out for a higher rating um, but for now that'll do. Um, because I'm only running this, I'm not running any power inverter or anything off of it, so I'm not drawing any load, so I should be okay. Um, I've got 40 amp on the charge controller um, off the bar, so uh, it's time to plug this in. Which, all of this is off, so nothing should happen, hopefully. So I've got this on camera, I'm going to stand maybe here, um, I'm in the way of everything. Right, well it didn't blow up, so that's main power on, nothing, good. Now then, when I turn this trip on, it should turn this on. And it has. It's worked. Uh, we are, it says we've got 25 volts in the system. It's currently at 20 degrees in here. We're currently at 55% capacity on the battery. The guy told me these were charged, they're obviously not. So these are going to need a charge. So what I might do is disconnect all of this and put the charger on it. But the system's working. I'll uh, I'll zoom in and show you. Let me turn on the main power, and then turn on the DC. Right there we are. We can see we've got 25 volts in the battery at the moment, uh, going on up here. Currently says it's 18 degrees in here. I can verify that from a thermometer across the room. Um, Apparently it's 54%. Now that's not correct, so we need to set those. So, hello there. This is one of the massive panels that uh, I managed to get for about 30 quid each because they've got damage on them, which you can probably see here and down the bottom there. Basically, the glass is broken, but these cells still work. Um, not all of them, I mean there's going to be some obscurity and there's dirt on it, but I tested it out in the sunlight earlier and uh, I got uh, 40, 44 to 46 volts off of it, which is good because it's supposed to be output in 50, so we're not losing that much. And I got four of these, these are 490 watt uh, Triton um, solar panels, really good solar panels. Um, and yeah, they're supposed to output about 12 amps and about 50 volts each, and I've got four. 
so uh, should give us a decent amount of power. So I'm going to zoom in, show you some of this damage, um, and then I'll also show you hopefully an amp reading, amp reading, amp reading or a volt reading or something. Hopefully the lights in here are going to be enough to set the solar panel off, but uh, we'll see. If not, I'll uh, have to wait till tomorrow and show you outside. You can see the damage up here. It's completely shattered and dented in. So there's obviously been something that's impacted that, uh, probably on the wind or something like that. And then down the bottom here, we've got some shattering as well. Um, but, I mean, the whole thing's got cracks across the glass, but it doesn't stop the photo cells being exposed. The only thing is, is water can now get in between the two, um, which could cause some issues. But what I'm hoping is the majority of it's okay. What I can do, if I want to preserve the longevity of these panels, is um, seal them with a, a resin, which I might yet do. I've cut myself a few times on these bits of glass as well, so it might be worth doing that just to kind of deal with the loose stuff as well. Right, let's zoom in for the test. Okay, so we've just got a cheap multimeter, and it is like the cheapest one that you can get. Okay, so I'm going to switch this to DC voltage, uh, 200. Um, this is the negative, so I'm going to pop the negative inside this one, like that, and hope that stays in there. Let's try this again. Yeah, I'm getting 21 off of it in here. So, um, yeah. 21 volts, which isn't bad considering I'm getting it off of indoor lighting uh, on a smashed panel. So uh, that's not bad at all. I'm uh, attempting to drain some of this battery. Um, turn the light on. You can see it at 24 volts. Uh, I don't know what's up with this, but when there's no load on it, it seems to say that it's got like 50% um, actual battery, um, but it actually hasn't. So that says 15% now which is good, which means I've used a load of it, which means tomorrow's test is going to be good. Come. So I decided to come down and uh, have a look at the system. It's a very overcast day. The battery bank is full. Um, so we've got 91 volts coming from the PV. Uh, point, half an amp. So, uh, but that's because we're not getting much out of it. So we're getting 40 watts. So for, like I said, it's 0.6 kilowatt hours. So um, from some damaged panels, I don't think that's bad. So, uh, yeah. Not a very good day at the moment. And there's the solar array up there. Oh. Right, so that is the AC um, input breaker. Uh, next to it is the output um, connections. So we've got uh, live neutral earth. All we need is live and neutral on these two because we're all going to have the earth coming in from over here. Here's my earth, this one here. In the UK we go green and yellow. Um, this section here is for the battery input. You've got plus, minus, and then that's a fuse in the middle there, um, which you could bypass if you had a trip um, as well, but I'm just gonna rely on that fuse. 
Here is a um, RS-485 connector um, for the remote monitoring uh, situation um, and you've got a, uh, a connection there for a battery thermometer which I don't currently have. So first things first I need to wire up the battery to here. Oh by the way this little box here that's for what the PV array so I can put some more panels on there or I might put the turbine on there. Yeah. So the idea is what I'm thinking I'm gonna do because I had to take that socket off anyway is I'm gonna take the live feed coming in to this remove it and put it in its own box down here and then reroute it into this and then go from this into that consumer unit. So what we're talking about is from here into the consumer unit, from here into here. So I need to take that out of here into there and then, yeah? So that this sits in between these two is the idea. We are now running 100% just off the batteries in the workshop, all right? The trip switch for the main feed, which is here, is off. I've rerouted the power back into there, so everything goes through the inverter. So everything in here now, anything I turn on will be run through this inverter fantastic and the way it's currently wired when the AC is on once I've set done the settings in the actual thing and read the manual um, basically I can set it up so that it favors the battery and when the battery gets to a certain level of depletedness and it isn't charging from the solar array and there isn't any solar um, energy coming in either then it will fail over to an AC supply which could be a generator but in this instance it is grid uh, I've just got to put the covers and stuff back on there and that's it um, we'll come back in a bit come back for another video um, where I will have I will show oh, this device which is the wireless um, the e, e box Wi Fi, um, and then I'll also show you the RJ45 Wi Fi version, which is the new version, um, and uh, and yeah, kind of explain some differences about those. But for now, the workshop is off the grid. <laughs> 